Is it still possible to become not just a YouTuber, but a successful YouTuber in 2021? Fact of the matter is this, YouTube has never been more saturated and competitive than it is right now today. Which begs the question again, is it even possible to grow here on this platform? Here's what's up, if you want the 15 second answer, of course, it'll always be possible to grow. In just four months, StockMo has gained over 230,000 YouTube subscribers. And what's really staggering is the fact that his channel generates anywhere between $1,400 and $22,000 each and every month. And this is Jay. Now he doesn't appear on camera, he plays Minecraft, and he's gained over 10,000 subscribers in one year. And if you're into art and animation, maybe telling stories, well then check out Blue Bowtie. In just seven months, this channel's gained over 52,000 YouTube subscribers. But maybe your style is more based in teaching a skill, something like gardening, coding, or how to speak a new language. That's exactly what this channel covers. They've gained over 100,000 YouTube subscribers again in just one year year and in the process they've earned one of these you drink coffee morgan drinks coffee has gained over 200,000 subscribers and in just 10 months and here's where it gets really interesting number one they've only published 31 videos in 10 months that equals about a video every 10 days and they're generating anywhere between a couple hundred and thirty five hundred dollars each and every month based on just ad revenue and the thing you wanna do is focus on one specific audience. Your audience has nothing to do with those people that have subscribed to your channel. Your audience is not your subscribers. The audience and how you wanna think about it, I mean, if you want the easy way to grow fast, is one specific group of viewers on YouTube that all share one common thing, like a niche or a type of content they like to watch, like videos about fishing or videos about tech. And here's the thing, the more you get really specific around that one audience, the easier it is for you to make decisions moving forward, the easier it will be to identify video topics, and the easier it'll be to get a viewer not just to watch a video, but to subscribe, which by the way is really hard, and to come back to your channel, which is key because that is the point at which you'll trigger the algorithm and you'll be far more likely to get a lot of views. And then step number two is to upload videos regularly, at least one a week. And if you're a subscriber and you're thinking, ah, oh, I hate hearing that. It's so hard to upload one video a week and I can't, Sure you can, you can, you might think, well, I typically go outside and I do metal detecting, so I can't. Yes, you can. There's a million ways to film videos just like this one in your home. And when you do go out, film a bunch of B-roll of you metal detecting or doing whatever you do when you're outside to typically make the videos you like to make. And I get it, I, I like to do certain kind of videos myself. But the fact of the matter is when you publish regularly, you get a big boost from the algorithm. Did you know that videos are tagged new anytime a new video comes out? And at that point, you will be more likely to rank higher because YouTube boosts those new videos. Now here's a power tip that again, will really boost your results. Practice the art of uploading fast and slow. The idea is really simple, that you upload a lot of videos when you get started because that's gonna really help you work out the kinks, understand the workflow, what's involved, it's gonna give you a sense of all the things and you're gonna learn so fast and it's gonna make your job so much easier three months, six months down the line. Then what you wanna do is slow down and think to yourself, how can I make these videos better? Because if you're uploading like five videos a week, there's no time to think. But when you do slow down, you're gonna be likely to see things that you can improve, things that will help you drive more views and you'll absolutely crush it. Number three is to really focus and to push yourself to create new and different types of videos. This is what I mean, create a video just like this. Sit down, indoors, make a video. Then mix it up, go outside, try a vlog, 
make a video where you do some kind of like speed art or you film really fast, make some time lapses, add a voiceover. Again, the idea is to try different styles to find your voice. Here's the thing, when you start to succeed, you'll develop something that's unique to you that only you can bring to YouTube. And at that point, when you do that, you'll be more likely to grow because what this platform doesn't need is more videos that are kind of the same as all the other videos. You know, here's the thing, when you put yourself on camera, it's hard, it's scary, but at that point, you're creating something that's different because you are a unique snowflake. <laughs> But for real, right? I mean, everybody is unique. We all have our own skills, abilities, and things we bring to the table, and that's what you want to leverage. Now, I'm not saying to put yourself on video. I'm saying to try different things so you develop a style that sets you apart. Step number four, you got to stop watching YouTube. Thing is, you don't want to watch YouTube. You want to study YouTube. Ask yourself, why is this video driving so many views? Why has this YouTuber succeeded? And when you start getting into the compare game, brother, sister, you gotta stop. And, and if you insist on comparing, do yourself a favor and make sure you compare not just the views that the big YouTuber is driving, the one that you're jealous of, but make sure you check to see how many videos they've published. Number five. Copy. It's not about copying another YouTuber. It's learning what's worked for another YouTuber and studying that. And the more you get really honest with where you're at and what needs to improve, the more you ask again from the previous step, why is this video successful? And then you kind of pull that apart and you apply it to the video you make, the one where you kind of copy, it'll be between us. I won't tell anybody, but I promise when you do that, when you think in that manner, when you let go of the jealousy, when you let go of the compare game and you simply break it down to that's done well, I could do better. I'm going to copy that with the goal of learning how to improve my videos. Over time, it's going to help you really create your own voice. The thing that's so critical on this platform. If you don't stand out, you're like everybody else and you won't grow. So copy what's worked and understand it's an exercise to find your voice. Item number six is to study graphic design. You gotta study a lot on YouTube. You gotta really focus and everything around you becomes your canvas for studying and researching. When you're at the grocery store, you look at the packaging and you go, how does that look? Is it aesthetically pleasing? How are the colors? What are the color palettes? Does it work? Is it too crowded? Is there enough white space? How about rule of thirds? If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's because you haven't studied graphic design. You might be thinking, I am a graphic designer. I'm not. I've never really taken any kind of course. I actually did. I hated it and I dropped out. But I use simple tools like on my iPad and I make thumbnails and I make graphics and I'm always thinking about does this look visually pleasing? Your videos need to look if you drive more views. It's really that simple. This video on the screen right now will really walk you through leveraging keywords, click and watch, and when you do, you're gonna feed a poodle. I've got two poodles and they're hungry. Sure, you're gonna get the views, but poodles.